Hello, everyone. Good afternoon and welcome to Brand Talk, another way to talk. We're not going to have any screaming, no yelling, just good old fashioned chatting and discussion where all we do is enjoy each other's company. And today is going to be no exception with someone who is a dear friend, and every time we see each other at get-togethers, we are always having uh, chuckles and talking about movies because that's his beat, and that's what he does. He is a director. So what I would like to do is introduce this grand brand, and the man is Joe Lobianco. And... Uh, he is a director who makes feature films, documentaries, and TV. And having worked in TV and music previously, jo Joe's first love is film and photography. I love photography. We'll have to get into that as well. As a director of music and film, Joe started his career working for commercial and individual clients, such as the New York Jets, Bloomingdale's and IBM. Joe's photography has been featured in many publications throughout the world, including the New York Post. His work has circulated to millions. Joe recently completed directing the film, the full length feature, Three Doors from Paradise, a book trailer for Grateful Guilt and chokehold for tv he's in pre-production on an upcoming feature film tin mirror productions Tr productions is a film production company founded in 2016 by two seasoned production professionals joe lobianco and tom di oreo their vision had a single goal in mind, to create experiences that are intensely compelling for audiences. It is the overall mission of each production to draw audiences into the story and to make them feel as if it is their own. We want to compel and engage our audience on an emotional level to create a sense of participation, explains director Joe Lobianco. We accomplish this by creating perspectives in each scene that are emotionally real. It instantly pulls them into the story. And it is without any further ado that I bring this creative brand and dear friend, Joe Lobianco. Joe, welcome to Brand Talk, another way to talk. Another How way to talk. <laughs> Great. How are you, man? Great. Good. Very good. That's mm -hmm. what I. That's exactly what I want to hear. So how did you, how did you get into the movies? Okay, well, it's it was a long and winding road. <laughs> oh, really? I, I started out in doing uh, TV, industrials, commercials, things like sure. that. Um, I got into the. I was also in the music field. Um, then I put that down for a while, and I came back to photography. That's what got me in originally, still photography. Right. Um, and I got a job doing photography on a, a, a film, being the, the photographer on the, the still photographer on a film. Sure. And it, it, the bug just hit me. I always love movies. And I said, I decided maybe this is something that you want to do. Maybe you want to go into the into movies. So I talked to uh, a few people. I talked to Tom, who's my partner now, and uh, we tried our hand at making, uh, you know, doing a few things. We started with a short film, which did well in festivals, and you know, it, it's still playing in places. 
Um, and we moved on. We just moved on from there. So, you know, little by little, we got things together. We did a feature film. We're doing more features now. Um, and uh, one thing led to another, and here I am. Well, the, the, oh, and, and we're so glad that you've decided to uh, make that turn. I, um, I know something about photography, and my question to you about photography, and of course we're going to be talking to, uh, about movies because that's what this is all about today, the movie brand. Um, I, were you considered, a, you weren't a still life photographer. You were more no. of a photojournalist. In yes. other words, what you would do is you take the personalities and yes. that scenes. I, mean, I, I had some jobs doing like portraits and things like that, but that's not my thing. I always send, I would always send those people somewhere else. Well, well you know, it's so funny because a portrait photographer uh is so different from a still life photographer and still life right. i mean they're very very different um uh ex areas of expertise and you can't and never the twain shall meet because right. i have a friend of mine uh, uh he, he'll kill me by if i mention my, his name but i will mention his name his name was bob lorenz and when i used to work with canon we used to he used to take the best pictures photos i should say of typewriters that you would ever want to meet really? it was so it was so exact and so clear i mean his cameras i think used to be there were german cameras and they would cost like 50 60 70 000, along with his lenses and right. in those days it was film it wasn't as digital stuff right. And I and over the years we worked together, and um, he was able to transition to people, but he wasn't <laughs> he wasn't happy with the people, you right. know. But uh, anyway, uh, uh, yeah, he 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 award winning. He got me a number of awards, um, uh, art director awards. Um, he he was simply simply wonderful but uh yeah, yeah but anyway so i, I i'm going to be somewhat self interested here i want to i want you to talk about uh a movie that i'm involved in and uh that you got me <laughs> involved in you got me and another another guest who came on the show ellis hennigan he's he's in this movie too and I, I'm not going to spoil it. What's the name of the movie? And what is it about? I mean, the people, uh, the audience is going to love this movie. Go ahead. All right. Well, the name of the movie is Skip. Okay. And it's about. Uh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. A, a man who is going to skip a marathon. <laughs> uh, literally, I don't mean forego the marathon. I mean skip the marathon physically <laughs> and it's, it's, it's uh, a faux documentary um and oh. it's about his trials and tribulations training um there are people for it there are people of course against it the con the controversy um it's half real and half document half uh scripted so um we're very excited about it we are we've begun shooting as much as we can in this environment which is you know you know sticky right now about what you can do and what you can't do um but we're getting little by little we're getting things done so we're getting a little closer but uh we're getting what we have so far in the can meaning what's shot already is good really good it's funny it's uh poignant um and um i'm very encouraged and excited about this if we can get to you know the other scenes um where there's a few more people and it's a little hard to shoot right now because of the COVID. sure 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 well uh, uh, you know i i do uh, if you don't mind you know my character is is really i think a stretch i play a conservative <laughs> a newsmaker who uh is uh somewhat reticent 
about uh, having this person skip right. for, uh, for the liability, of course. The liability. I would say reticent is an understatement. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and of course, uh, my best friend, Ellis, is making, uh, you know, really likes to uh, rev me up and get me started. And uh, uh, it's, it's, I'm, I'm very, very excited about it. So I can't, I can't wait for my close up, Mister. No, no, it, it should be coming soon. <laughs> we're gonna, we're gonna get to that soon. Uh, uh, yeah, that's gonna be good. Oh no, I, I, I can think of uh, no other movie that I would rather be involved with. And by the way, you, uh, what your brand is, is that you create a very, very nice uh, atmosphere with uh, the folks that are in the movie. I remember going for the, ca for the casting. I went for my audition uh, it was a very, very, uh, it was very, very warm and, uh, and that's important. It re it relaxed me because I think maybe I was on one other audition in my life. This was not something I did. This was not, this was not the, the, the profession I chose, you know, right, uh, right. so, uh, it was very, very different, but, uh, you, you were able to, um, calm everybody down and and get i i think uh the best out of me hey i got the part so uh well, we, I, you know yeah. we i make it my business and and everyone in this uh, involved in the production uh we make it our business to make it a group effort number one sure so that people feel involved the whoever it is feels involved the actors the crew the, the cameraman the, the what it doesn't make any difference to me to the person who's running out to get us coffee I, I, mm. I like to feel like not only make it so that they're involved but they have a what they're thinking or saying has some kind of merit and importance because it does sure um you don't know where a good idea is going to come from sure. now it doesn't mean that we take every idea but I don't mind right. people saying, well, why don't you, within reason, you know, every can't sure. be like all over the place and everyone's screaming, but <clears throat> certainly with um, the actors or, or auditions, uh, I, I've been on many auditions in my life for different reasons or been in on or run auditions or seen other people run auditions or whatever. So I've seen a lot of auditions. And to me, that, that person, that actor, came from God knows where that day. They were ner they're nervous. They may have ta taken a train, two subways and a taxi. You know, it, it, it may not be the easiest thing in the world. And for them to be rushed in and out, right? I don't think that's right. Morally, ethically, any way you want to call it, I don't think that's right. Right. They took the time to be there. I'm going to take the time to listen to at least what they're doing. And I usually, no matter what, they do. They could be great. They could be okay. They could stink. I usually have them do a couple things and maybe have them do those things more than once mm -hmm. because I don't know. Maybe the first take they were nervous. Maybe the, sure. You know, if I give them a little direction that they'll 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 nail it. And I've had that happen with the right. second time through. I'm like, wow, this is you're the person. Yeah. So I just take a different outlook on how you should hold an audition than other people. Yeah. Now, would you, you know, the, on this show, we talk about brands and you kind of like showed your hand. You let me know that you really were a photographer and uh, that's really what you, you, you enjoy. But um, what would you say is your brand on the, on the movie set? Are you a... Um, an artistic director? Are you a technical director? Are you the guy that's going to get the shot? Are you the are you the the videographer? What is your role, and how are you different from your uh, partner, your business partner, in terms of setting setting the stuff up, the movie up? Go ahead. Okay, so on the set, I'm I, I'm the director. So, but I direct in a way 
that is, I got a certain person for the part because I want that person for the part. I, I don't try to make you something necessarily that you're not. Got it. Um, having said that, I know a lot of, being that I know a lot about still photography also, I know a lot about the lenses and I know a lot about the lights. Got it. So I'm serving at the moment uh, as on this movie as the, the cinematographer also. So I'm telling, you know, I'm, and I like to have a, you know, really, it doesn't matter if I have a cinematographer or not. I like to have input on what lens we're using because I like a certain look to what I'm doing. I love it. Um, I like a um, more of a wide angle type of look to it because I, I want to see their environment. If I don't use a wide angle lens, meaning if I use a, a, a uh, telescopic lens where you're only seeing maybe their face, there's right. got to be a reason for that. I need a reason to have that. Sure. In general, I like to shoot where you see what's behind them. Also, sure. But you know where they are and why they're there. Mm -hmm. um, for instance, just to bring up another movie, The Revenant was like that. Where you, they used a lot of wide-angle lenses for people because they wanted to see the environment behind them. I like that look. Yes. I, I don't like the just the face. You know, I try to, and, and as time goes on, I'm doing this more and more, and I'm using close-ups only when there's a reason for a close-up. Um, not that I shy away from that, but there has to be a, a reason in my mind why there's a close-up. Uh, now, I'll, I'm, I'm going to let you in on something. As a viewer, I much prefer that approach. I don't want the close up. You may want the close up to get the emotion, but I rather be the one doing the cuts or the editing so mm -hmm. that I rather pan. And so I'm much more attracted to that. I, I don't know if other people are as well, but uh, I'm, as soon as you mention that, uh, I, I just said, yes, that's, that's the kind of, that's the kind of director I want. Right. See, uh, yeah, I, I'm always fighting with my, not myself, but, and I, fighting's not the right word, but there's always turmoil about, should we do a close up there? Uh, to me, I just assume everything was, you know, a, 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 uh, a master shot. You know, I like the directors that use a like, like I, I think I've mentioned this to you before. I'm a big Woody Allen fan. I was going to go there. Go ahead. So, and he he rarely uses close-ups. You can count them right. on your hands in the whole movie. Um, it's a lot of master shot. He moves the camera. He he does a lot of that, and I like that. That I gravitate to. I don't like a lot of. Sometimes you have to do it, and I you know I say I don't like something, but that doesn't mean I don't do it. I don't like a lot of cutting, particularly. Um, I'll cut, but I like the camera to do the cutting, so to speak. Okay. But sometimes you can't. Sometimes that doesn't work. So, it, uh, you know, everything's out the window. Let me just get this one. Sure, off. sure. He's going to call back, but the heck with him. Um, <laughs> you, you were saying that you don't like to do a lot. Sometimes uh, you end up having to cut and having to use different shots, which is okay with me. You right. know? The, like I am mesmerized by long the long takes, like long shots. Like I don't know if you remember Goodfellas. Yeah, they, they were going into the Copa when they went from outside all the way to their table. It was one shot. That is tremendous to me. Yes, I love that. Yes, yeah. Now, how uh, you, you know you brought up Woody Allen? How would you compare Alfred Hitchcock? How was he in terms of the camera? Was he a wide camera or was he a close-up? Okay, Alfred Hitchcock used every, most of his shots were, you know, master shot and medium shot. He didn't do a lot of close-ups. Um, and the lenses were like lenses like 50 millimeter. Yes. Um, where it, 50 millimeter, if I'm going to say 45 millimeter-ish, 
is about what we see with our eyes. Okay. That's what we're seeing when we're looking around. That, that's the size, 45, 50 maybe. He used a lot of that size in his movies, which I, I'm big on the 35 and the 24. Those are my two go-to lenses, the 35 and the 24. Um, the 35 looks more like what we see, and the 24 is the wider where you can see things more in the background. Mm -hmm. uh, and Alfred Hitchcock was was more in the in that range of 45, 50, 35, like that kind of number. Right. Now, one of the things he did, um, which I I don't want to say I do, but I try to emulate. You know, you emulate people that you admire. Sure. Is he didn't take a lot of shots that he wasn't going to use. Right. For instance, on Rear Window, it was so planned out. There was very little on the cutting room floor. He, they all had hardly any extra film. They used wow. everything they shot and because he knew what he wanted. And I feel I try to do with that with my movies. I know what I want. Like, for instance, Skip, it's shot like a documentary. So I have to shoot it in a way that you would shoot as if it was a documentary. I can't, for instance... I can't shoot something where there a camera wouldn't have normally been there. Very well. Very well. For instance, if I go back to something that happened to you when you were in high school, was there a camera there? Why was there a camera there? Like I can't go to something that was in your mind or something. Right. There had to have been a reason there was actually a camera there. So that's a little bit different than your normal movie. In a normal movie, you shoot anything you want. It's just part of the story. In this movie, we're not doing that. There, there has to be a reason for a camera to have been there and a reason why we have the footage. Yeah. Well, you're listening to uh, Joe Lobianco talking about the science and art of movie making here on Brand Talk, another way to talk, where you can see us every Thursday at 3 o'clock. And we're getting into this with what I would like to call the science and art of movie making. I never ha I never heard anybody talk about lenses and the millimeter of the lenses before or the or this, the, you know, the, the type of shots until uh, you told me about this. I, I'm finding this very, very, very interesting and uh, very, very unique. And what I like to talk about a little bit about now is what kind of subject matter do you like to document? Or what, what do you like? What kind of movies do you like to make? Do you like oh. to make Go ahead. This is a tough question. I like ev I like what I do. I like everything. I like. I'm liking this doing skip. The next movie, um, which is more of a th drama thriller, yes, is how do I answer this question? <laughs> because I like it's so varied what I like. But having said that. If I'm going to watch a movie, go ahead. It would be more like a drama. Yes. It would be more of a. I'll give you an example. Um, I think that the movies, and I'm not, I'm not a throwback person at all. I, at all, a zero throwback person. I'm just going to bring something up. In the in the 1950s and the late 40s, there was something called film noir. Yes which was a black and white detective type of uh, double indemnity is film noir. A lot of shadows, you know, a lot of, everything was about the character and the story. I like that. I like it. I think one of the drawbacks now today that we find in movies, and again, I love new movies. I love everything is the story sometimes leaves, I, I usually sit down and I know what happened. The minute, the, the first 30 seconds, I know what happened and, and I know what happens. Rarely am I surprised. I think that the movies in the, in the film noir movies were more story driven. Yes. And I like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
So I try to bring that, and I'm trying it. The more movies I make, the more I'm able to do it because the more I know how to do it and I understand how to do it. I try to bring that story to the to the screen. Yeah. Not so much the other stuff, you know, the CGI or the, the effects or the color or the blah, 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 blah. To me, a good movie, you can watch it in black and white. I really don't care. Right. The color is just a distraction in a sense. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so um, what I'm, what my, my goals are, are to bring a good story along with a modern look and a modern take on, on the idea. Right. Well, you know, in the old days, in the 1930s and 40s, I mean, they started with great books, <laughs> yeah, right. you know, and they made movies from the great books. I right, mean, I mean, the dead, I mean uh, that that's where it all started. And right, no, then today, uh, not so much. It's more right. the cinematography. Go ahead. Right. People are always talking about, oh, they don't make movies like they did before. And it's not just old people. Everyone, a lot of people say that. <laughs> There's a there's a reason, there's a reason for it. The stories are not as, as, as right. The stories are not as good. Yeah, you know, I'll tell you a movie I was surprised about. At, and since oh. we're naming specific movies, I don't. I again, I usually could sit down and go, oh, uh, and then I just have to, I just have to follow the paces through the movie, knowing what happens. But Shutter Island, I was surprised. I don't know if you saw Shutter Island, but I was surprised at, at the end. Okay. So for all those who want a surprise, there you go. Shutter mm -hmm. Island. Okay. Well, that well, then that's one for the record books, huh? Right. That's one for the record books. <laughs> yeah, I, I I would have to I my taste in movies is is kind of like the two extremes but maybe it isn't and i and i ask you to maybe analyze it i guess my favorite movie of all time is the godfather and then of course on the other side would be the wizard of oz and <laughs> it's kind of like it's kind of like very strange but for very different for very different uh reasons i think I love the characters of the Godfather and I love the characters of the Wizard of Oz. And I love I and I love that story of, you know, um you know, of finding w wanting to find uh your your dream, you know, and um and realizing what the characters had in their inside they had all along and the whole idea of the godfather was the realization of what was happening uh to him by the characters around him so maybe you could uh, uh psychoanalyze me <laughs> i don't see that as being that odd right that combination i really don't because the cinematography in them both were great. The, sto the stories were very good. The characters were good. I don't see why, why you have to be, or anyone has to be pigeonholed into liking only mob movies or only right. musicals or only, you know, I'm not, I don't really like musicals, but I love the Wizard of Oz. Yes. I'm not a musicals guy. I agree I with you. I couldn't agree with you. Because it's not really a musical. Yeah. They don't. They don't, I, I don't see, and it sounds crazy, but I don't see The Wizard of Oz as a musical. I don't even barely see the music, even though they're singing and dancing. Right. It's just part of it to me. Yes. Yes. I, yeah. I, 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 the Godfather, you know, it's funny you should mention The Godfather because the cinematographer in The Godfather was Woody Allen's cinematographer for many movies. Oh, who is that? I, I don't, I do, you know what? I can't remember. I'm so sorry I asked you. <laughs> but I mean, right. I mean, I was I doing it. I, my professor, Gene, was kicking in. No, 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 right, right. I don't know. If, he, if I see his name, I'll go, oh, yeah. But I don't remember his name off, offhand. But go ahead. I'm sorry I interrupted. They, they had the same cinematographer. And you notice the Godfather, there's a lot of darkness. Yes. Which I like. There's a lot of, you know, you don't see everything. I like that. 
and I'm, I'm as time goes on, we're, we're, you know, we're developing, I'm developing a little more of that style. I can't do it in this current movie because this doesn't fit, you know, right. it doesn't work. Right. You know, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a documentary or a mockumentary. Um, a mockumentary. It doesn't work. You couldn't have that. You couldn't have that. Um, but the next movie will have that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what other movies have you done? Uh, I think you did um, uh, a movie about a special needs child, okay. wasn't yeah. that? Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. All right. It was called Three Doors in Paradise. You can. It's on Prime. It's on uh, Google Play. It's Fandango. Most of the platforms have it. Okay. So it's called Three Doors from Paradise. It's about an autistic man. He's in maybe in his 30s somewhere. He's lived all his life in group homes. And now, because of budget restraints, he can't live in a group home anymore. They kind of they put him right. out there and they give him an apartment in the not a great neighborhood, not a great building. Um, and he has niceness and troubles, you know? And he ends up uh, befriending a little girl. She's like maybe eight. And they end up having to protect each other um through you know whatever comes down the, the pike you know they both have problems and they end up helping each other and that's the movie basically and what was your uh, how did people respond to that what did uh, they did they uh, was it a positive response or was it more uh what are you doing this was not uh, the best kind of a relationship to have between the autistic child i mean the autistic young adult and the the, the child any any sort of negatives or no no there hasn't been any as far as i know if there is then there is right. i don't know what to say no, but okay. I haven't heard anything no because everyone's been too, you know I get only good reports and good responses about the movie. Um, I, I don't think that you can pigeonhole people. Um, if they're going to be f friends, then they're going to be friends and they I, needed each other and they helped each other. And I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> well, you know, no, I, and I couldn't mm -hmm. agree more, but today the world is tipsy turby a topsy turby. And, uh, I just didn't know, uh, what kind of a reaction you got. You just never know, uh, in today's world, uh, what's in fact, uh, going on. So I thought I would just, uh, uh, throw it out. Let me ask you, we, I have a lot of, uh, uh, viewers that want to get into the movies what what is your uh, recommendation? How did you know? How would you get involved in it? How do you how do you start it? Okay, now what by by getting into the movies? Do you mean as actors? As movie yes, makers? probably movie act. Well, let's let's take a look as uh, as an actor, and then of course let's look at it in terms of being a movie maker. Okay, as an actor. Uh, I would say that you have to get some kind of experience. It doesn't have to be in a movie, but something, how do you, you know, where you're taking classes, where you're meeting with other people who do it, where you, you're working things out, whether you're in a play, whether you're in a group, you know, a, uh, you know, a local group, something to uh, hone yourself and understand what's going on. Um, and then start looking, going on auditions. And that doesn't mean you have to get the audition. It's just nice experience to go on the auditions. Right. Um, you can find these auditions on IMDb. I love um, it. Yes. I, I, I put, put a casting call out on IMDb and I got, we always get a lot, a lot of people responding. Um, you can look at backstage. You can look at your local, uh, you know, your community theater type of thing. Um, I don't think I'm telling anything that's that's no. that groundbreaking. Um, but I think you need to to ev even just take take classes on on acting. Um, sure. Because this this it, it, it's not just you're not just pretending to be something. You have to be that person, or right. you have to be that thing that you're trying to be. Yeah. Um, 
Now, it, with your part, you have to be be pretty much yourself. It works great. Right. But what if you had to be something totally different? How do you get to that person? How do you know? How do I get inside that person? Exactly. Where I am the person, I think like that person. Would that person actually do this? Would they wear that? Would they talk like this? Exactly. Or, you, know, you have to. It, it, it's not as easy as just one, two, three, bang. Oh, I'm pretending I'm, you know, a brain surgeon, uh, and I'm I'm doing brain surgery on this man, and you know, his son is outside, and whatever, whatever, and I end up just making things up. But but how do I get to the place where that person is? Yeah. What are they? What's the? I always when we we also I'm involved in the writing a lot also of our scripts. Yeah. Either I it's my story. I write the script. I co-write the script, or I have the writer write what I, my ideas you know for this story are. Mm -hmm. Um, and one of the things I do before we even start the the script is we write character development on bio on all the main characters. And when I say a bio, I mean, I might have 10 pages on a character that you n will never see nine of those pages in the movie. Because I'm like, where did he grow up? What kind of parents did he have? What jobs did he have all the way from a kid till now? Where did he go to school? What kind of car he, does he drive? Right. Uh, does he have relationships? What, what's his grandmother like? What I, We do all of that. So when we start writing and I start directing and I have to tell people or, you know, guide them on what this person is like, I know what, where they came from. Why is he like this? Well, his parents are divorced. So maybe he's this. We have all these things before we even start a script. So I would say that an actor should be the same way. You should know what that character is, not what he is on the page or the surface, because that's nothing. That's just flat. What happened to that person to make them like that? And what are their goals? What are they trying to get maybe in this scene? They have an ulterior motive. Why, why are they acting this way? I think it's all important. Uh, yeah. Well, you know, last week I had um, uh, somebody who was doing uh, documentaries on the, uh, on the Jesus Project. And uh, I, I brought this up, and I guess I bring this up for uh, our listeners, and that is the, the relationship between casting and the actor and the casting director and the director and the casting and the producer and the casting and the money people. I mean, I, 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 I throw my hands up. I don't understand it and maybe you <laughs> maybe you could throw some light on what is that relationship do you do you have casting folks uh involved or do you simply do the casting yourself you know we well we have a casting director but i have final say got it uh, any director would i would think would have final sure say. sure um i tell them what i want like, what are, what are we trying to do for this? A lot of times people come in for a one part and I end up giving them a different part altogether. That, that happens all the time. I've also had people come in where everyone in the room said no, was like, what? And I said, no, that's the person. And they turned out to be the person. They were great at it. Now, right. that's not to say we haven't made mistakes. I've cast people who later on, I, I you know, I wasn't so sure that it was the right person for that part. Um, but for the most part, I've been lucky. And uh, usually I, we can get out of them, you know, what we want to get out of them, whether, you know, yeah. Yeah. it was what I thought. A lot of times it ends up being something else th than you thought it was going to be. Yeah. It's fine. I have no problem with that, I mean, you know. Yeah. And let me ask the $64,000 question, which is the $64,000 question. How do you raise money for movies? How, how, what are the successful ways? Is that a good question or what, right? Uh, what are the successful ways of, of raising money? Is it, uh, is it uh, these um, online internet fundraising uh, apps? 
Uh, how have you been successful? Okay. We don't use the internet. At least we haven't so far used like crowd crowdfunding and all that. Right. We right. right. You can, there's a number of ways and things you can do. Um, and I, I guess I'll start with the most basic way. What we do for the most part, see, we own our all, all our own equipment. We don't rent anything. Right. We have access to a lot of locations, so we don't have to worry about that. Um, we, for the most part, we we fund for this movie we're doing now. We're funding it ourselves. So Got we're it. we're fund. We pay for everything ourselves. Got it. Um, we don't like to take out loans because then when the loan is due, you, you got to pay it. Um, we try good. to take advantage of things like uh, certain areas will pay you to shoot there. Certain states will pay you to shoot there. Certain countries will pay you to shoot there. Now, uh, we haven't shot out of the country, but for instance, if you're willing to go to uh, somewhere like Thailand, um, or they will pay up to 35 or 40%, they'll pay you back what you spent there. So if you spent a million dollars there and you can show them that you spent a million dollars there, they'll give you back four hundred thousand dollars. Wow. Because they want movie shot there. Um so that's another way. You can you can have investors. Um now to get investors, you have to prove that you're gonna make money. So right. we're in, we, we do that too. We're in the as a matter of fact, we're in the process of doing that with a movie that another movie that we're that I haven't even brought up yet, um, that we're that we're working with because that's going to be a big big budget movie. So we're going to need some outside money for that. We were we're lucky in that again. We have our own equipment. We have facility. We have a place to shoot. You know, we have a big lighting setup. We own all of that. So our costs are more i would say the actors are our costs that's our biggest cost anything that we're going to pay an actor now in this movie skip we're doing now it's a documentary no one's known in the movie really present company accepted um so we're not paying really paying actors in this one but in the last one we paid in the next one we paid so you know got it Got it. What what I want to what I want to communicate here is that that should not be a stumbling block. What it should be is something that you, in fact, overcome. But it shouldn't prevent you from doing what you really, really want to do. No, you can make a movie without any money at all. Right. Right. As long as you have a camera. Now we've got good we've got good stuff. We've got good cameras, good lights, good microphones, good audio, good top of the line computer stuff, all that that we put together over time. But you, you, you know, you'd, you used to watch. I don't know who's seen it by now, but you'd watch an old movie and they go, "We have a barn. Let's put on a play." Yeah, that's yeah. What, that's what you can do. What? Uh, there, are, there are. I'm going to say in this movie, Skip, we've got seventy people involved. Mm-hmm. Uh, we put together 70 people and we are really, the budget's, you know, whatever we're willing to put into it, we're doing it. And we get our movies on all over the place. We get our movies on, like I said, Prime, Google, uh, Roku, whatever channel you can name, probably our movies on there. Yeah. Other than, I don't think we have anything on Netflix. Other what are they Netflix. looking for? What are those that, that you just mentioned? What are they looking for to get on uh, their network? All right. There's, so there's a trick to it. You have to find a distributor that wants to do the kind of, that deals with the kind of movie that you're making. Got it. So if you're making a comedy, you don't go to a distribu distributor that distributes horror movies. Right. So and, then, and when I say distribution, I just don't mean Amazon Prime. I mean other they're going to distribute it in other countries, platforms in other countries. You know, you need a worldwide thing. Excuse me, a worldwide thing going on. 
So uh, what we do is uh, every year we try to go to uh, the American Film Festival, which is in uh, out in L.A., um, and that they're where we meet people, we meet distributors, we talk to them about what they're looking for, what we have. Um, we also, there's everybody's out there. There's, there's, there's uh, entertainment attorneys, there's insurance, there's different countries trying to get you to shoot there. There's producers, there's actors. There's a, we've met, made so many contacts at those places and we got distribution on our films in those places. So uh, I would say that that's an important a- aspect to get the right distributor. Oh, I love it. Get the right distributor and I, and we've, we have both. We've, you know, we've, we've, had all kinds of uh, things go on, good and bad. Yeah. We're talking to Jolo Bianco on the business of movie making and how it's important to get a distributor and how that can make the difference between making a profit and not making a profit or getting your film picked up versus your film not getting picked up. So, what is this big movie that you uh, that you kind of teased us with today that you're thinking about doing without letting the cat out of the the horse out of the barn? Can you right, talk well, a little bit about it? That we, yeah, well, we have two things in the in the works, um, in the in the background. Yet yeah. one of them is a uh, about a, a a female fighter. Um, wow, and she's got a story it, 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 although there's fighting in it um it's more about her and her her relationships with her father and things like that but there's fighting in it also so it's 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 a movie that you know you could be a fight fan and like it and you could be a drama fan and like it. it's more like raging bull it's raging so, bull wasn't about boxing it was about him that's right the same thing with the girl lead you know, it's not the same movie. It's very different, very different. But it's 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 more story driven. We also have a story about a, a drama thriller. Um, I don't want to tell you too much about this one. No, no, no. It, 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 it's about. Um, I would say the log line is about two brothers who find money and they, where they're not supposed to find it, and they end up fighting over it. That's as much as I can tell you about that. One. Okay, no, that's that sounds that sounds good. And what when are we going to start that? When are you going to well, start that? that? The script is nearly done, so we're still in the script stage. The first one with the fighter, the script is done. I'm in the money stage, you know, looking for money stage. Got it. The, that one, the script is is uh, is not quite done yet. Um, I'm, we'll probably be shooting the one with the brothers first. Mm-hmm. Um, because it will take less money and it'll, it'll take just less. In, it's less. It's a smaller movie. For right. instance, Heroes from Paradise is called a block movie. Um, Why is that? Well, it means that you could shoot it on your block. Like a lot of the movies you see, you could shoot it in your block. On your, you know, there's nothing. It's not like we're having, a, you know, a boat crash into, you know, the terminal, oh. the ocean liner, and the rocket ship. It's none of that. It's a smaller movie, like Silver Linings Playbook. Did you see that one? No, I did not. Okay, that's great. By the way, you should see that. That's a block movie. A lot, you know, a, a story-driven movie where there's, you know, there's made three or four main characters and the, you know, some side characters, and it all takes place in one town. Like that's a that's more of a that's called a block movie. Yeah, you can make it in a small area. So. Uh, the, the Brothers movie is a block movie. The other movie, the fighter movie, is not. It's more of a bigger production. Yeah. Yeah. Let me ask you, from an artistic point of view, um, who is a actor, an actress, that really does it to you, that gets your juices as a director that you might even want to work with someday? I love, I love Amy Adams. Really, Amy, I mean, fantastic. What is it about her that you like? She seems r- r- real to me. She seems, I believe her. Yeah. When she's acting, I believe her. Yeah. You know, a lot. I'm not going to say I don't sometimes, but I, yeah. 
whatever I see her in, you know, look, everybody, nobody's perfect. But sure. whatever, whatever I see her in, I believe what she's doing. Like she's really that person. And it's easy for me to just change from her being this character to that character. Some people you have trouble with, you know, they do one thing and you kind of like, and then when they go to do something else, you don't believe it. With her, I totally believe everything she does. I and also like uh, Christian Bale. I think he's good too. Oh, yeah. I couldn't agree with you more. I didn't. I, I used to not like him. It's right. funny. I used to not like him. Yeah. Now, the more time goes on, yeah, he showed me, not that I need to be shown, but he showed me he has no fear. Right. He'll lose weight. He'll gain weight. He'll do this, he'll that. He'll, whatever yeah. it takes. He'll do it. Yeah. And I, I, I think he's good. I really think he's good. Oh, no, I, I, yeah. Yeah. And I, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna forget the guy's name, but I, I also liked, I haven't seen him in a while. The Irish fellow, uh, that had a lot of, uh, had a lot of issues. Oh, I'm going to forget his name, but he, he was, uh, a wonderful guy. I can't, what I'm, kind of issues? He had uh, he had some alcohol issues and he Mickey had Ward, not not Mickey Ward. He's a he's in a guy in his late forties, early fifties. You would uh, uh, I I'm I'm gonna forget the guy. He had a he had a tough beard and he I, I'm gonna forget the guy's name. But he was, I think, one of the uh, tr uh, really great 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 actors young actors of the time and i i shouldn't even brought him up because <laughs> I'm, not, I'm having a, a senior moment now but i he, think you know, getting yeah. back to the actor thing we were talking about that because something just popped into my mind i think acting is about fear i love it you can't if you don't if you're afraid you can be afraid i i think i there's nothing wrong with being afraid of be of doing something or being somebody or being embarrassed or opening your there's nothing wrong with being afraid, but you can't let fear rule you. In other words, you can't let fear dictate what you're going to do or whether you're going to take take that. If you take the part, then you can have no fear doing the part. I I agree. I couldn't agree more. That's why I I. I, I try to do things. I, look, we're all afraid. I'm afraid as a director of doing certain things. But if I'm afraid, why, well, then if I can't let it rule me because then why am I doing it? Right. I'm, I'm sorry. Why am I doing it? What? what? Yeah. You know, I, I, won't be, I won't be forced into doing something that I don't. And the more I do it, the more that way I get. Because I don't, I think it's a mistake to make something just to sell it. The, what, I, what it, it seems to me, what we do, certainly what I do, when I don't care what people think, comes out better than when I'm in, my, in the back of my mind. Well, we need to sell this, so I need to do this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I don't need to do that. I don't need to do that. Yeah. Well, you know, I I like this uh, concept of uh, fear. Because most of us don't want to do things that we fear. We avoid it at, at, at all costs. And I know in terms of my life, it was probably the reason I did not become an entertainer. I, well, I, I didn't have the confidence. And I was this, uh, you know, this overweight kid that didn't have the confidence. And I didn't really get reinforced in school. And so, uh, and with the family, so it was this fear of going on an audition, of at least going out there. And All I right. really like I that. I got a story for you. It's not really a story, but I have, the, the joke with my family and my friends is I'll do anything. I will literally do any, if I want to do something, I will do it. So it's everyone is like, what is he up to now? What is he going to do next? What is, so that's what my life is. Um, wow. and, 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 
whether it's a different movie that's totally different than anything we've done, or I, I, I'm going to do something else, you know, in just in normal life. Um, the joke around my house and my friends is that what is Joe up to now? Um, so I, I think fear, I don't want to go at the end and regret anything. And I think that's what fear does to you. It makes you have regrets. I love it. No regrets. No, no regrets. regrets. Yeah. Uh, that's something that uh, people should ask themselves after uh, a certain amount of time. Do you have any regrets? Um, we're talking. Well, no, no. Yeah, go ahead. People will say no, but I don't believe that. Yeah. Yeah. I don't believe it. You're trying to tell me that you like you think you it was right to work in or do that when you hated getting up every day or whatever it is. You know what I mean? Whatever. I don't sure. believe that. Right. I, I'm sorry. I don't believe right. it. Well, you know, I, I'm a I'm kind of a, a lucky guy because at uh sixty uh, I I am doing what I love to do. I'm teaching, I'm doing everything I, I really want to do. I'm hosting a uh, podcast. I'm uh, I'm on TV fairly regularly. I write. Uh, I'm in a movie every once in a while. Right. I'm which, doing which, by the way, I want to talk to you about when we get you know later. Sure. When we get yeah, sure, sure. Um, so I'm living the dream, and you know, and the problem. I think you know this. You're not as old as I am, but you you're you're around people. But if you're too Pollyanna-ish, they hate you. <laughs> they you know, don't be around. I, you. I, I have always said it's funny. I, I, the joke around me is I always tell people I hate people, and the right. more I hate them, the more they love me. Right, right, right. You right. Can't be worried about whether people like you or not. I couldn't agree with you more. You'll never do anything. Yeah. If you asked but, me before the autistic man with the kid. I don't know what to tell you. I'm not, that's what I want. That's what I wanted. That's what it is. I'm sorry. That's I, uh, Hey, I couldn't agree more. And that's really the way I feel today, but I always felt that way. I was always someone that spoke my mind. I mean, I almost got, had my head handed to me when I would tell off the football players that they were this or that, or they were stupid or they shouldn't be doing that. And I mean, you know, I was, I was always five, seven and a half and I was telling six foot four, 240 pounders that they were idiots. Right. And then, and, and what, before they were to deck me, they would say, you know, <laughs> you got a point there. I I'm, you know, and, and give me the reprieve. Uh, the point is that, um, I'm having the time of my life and I don't give a darn what people in fact uh, say about it. I'm just going to do what I want to do. And that's, and that's the way right. that goes. Right. So, um, anyway, in the, um, few minutes that could you believe it we only got a few yeah, yeah. Yeah. i'm gonna turn the light on i'm getting dark here because it's getting dark by the way okay all right put the light on go ahead um where can we find you where can we find you on the internet all right so you can go to tin mirror productions that's just like it sounds t-i-n-m-i-r-r-o-r tin mirror productions.com yes and that you could find out everything. You can get in touch with us. You can see what movies we're doing, where they're playing, the trailers, all that stuff. Uh, you know, whatever you need should be from there. That's that's great. And I just picked up uh, a new uh, device. It's called uh, what is it called? Um, uh, something tree. Uh, Julian, what is it called? Uh, something tree that what it does is it gives you all of your emails in one location and you oh. could put it on your website. We'll, we'll get it. I'll get it for you. And uh, if anybody wants and, to email us, uh, yeah. the, the email address is tinmirror at gmail.com. Right. 
Well, this not, don't, not only has the emails, it also would have the URLs, any kind of link that you oh. you would want. So we'll uh, put it, pardon me. What is it called? I think it's something called Tree Something Tree. Nobody's helping me here. Okay. Uh, okay. We'll get it for you. Uh, link tree. A link tree. I might be link tree. Okay. So, um, is somebody? No, they're not. They're not doing that. Okay. See if I if when we when we go to a real live radio show and I have the uh, producer, he'll be yelling it in my ear. But we're not there yet. So you'll have to forgive me on that. But uh, when yeah. this is over, we will, uh, we'll, uh, uh, I, I will tell you what it's called. But uh, listen, uh, Joe, it was wonderful to have you on. Um, I've learned so much about the movie business. And I'm looking forward to uh, uh, finally completing this great movie. Well, I hope it's, it's going to be soon. Yeah, I think we can probably do it fairly soon. That sounds wonderful. And uh, by the way, please uh, look up uh, Joe Lobianco, and we'll have uh, all his links. And um, it's called uh, Linktree. Linktree. Okay. okay. Linktree. L I. So yeah. what you do is you go to Linktree and you can uh, start an account. So that's good. What's good about that? So uh, watch us next week. Another uh, version of Brand Talk where we're going to have Asi Matathias. Are you ready for this? He is a classical violin virtuoso who studied under Zubin Mehta. So uh, he's a wonderful. You'll, we'll have to get you to meet him as well. Oh, I'd like to meet him. Absolutely. Uh, he's a very very wonderful dear friend and we go around new york city to find the best meatball and we have we have decided that the best meatballs in new york city i'm going to get in trouble for saying this but i got to say it is bolatos on on um um houston street really in a uh, houston between um mulberry and mott the best meatballs ever yeah, we'll have to go together someday, oh, someday. oh absolutely yeah and i i want to bring i want to bring along um jim metzka who i mentioned to you about yeah 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 oh, yeah uh, yeah he he would be wonderful too so okay well listen joe thank you and we'll see you next week next thursday three o'clock brand talk another way to talk thank you joe